The first thing we need to do is remove this cap. Ideally, to remove it, you need a 17 mm cone wrench. Unfortunately, I don't have 17 now handy. I have 18. But I'll show you a little trick how you can do even with 18. So you need another another wrench like this which will use for leverage. This is 19 millimeter. Okay. We put it like here, like right here. And now what we what we actually need to do is pull this cap upwards. It looks like it may have been threaded, but it is not. It's just click type, so you need to pull it up and then it goes. Okay, let's try and do it. Like this. That's it. That's all we need to remove the cap. Okay, so once the cap is removed, it may seem that we can take the free up body but we cannot we need now to remove this lock ring to remove the lock ring ideally you need special pliers actually you can remove it with something simpler even with a couple of wooden toothpick you can but ideally use a proper tool and it's important that uh, the tips are very very thin because a lot of pliers like this have mm, thicker and with thicker it's possible that you don't enter the holes uh, of the lock ring. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's it. The lock ring removed. Now we are ready to pull the free up body from the up and while doing so we'll automatically pull the ceiling gasket which afterwards we'll need to carefully pull back in. So I'm pulling it upwards And here it goes. Okay, uh, now we have removed. This is the black thing. Uh, it is the ceiling gasket. Let's remove it. So the gasket. There's some dust over it, so it'll need some cleaning, I guess. But we'll get to this later. And now our interesting part. The free up body. So let's get back a little bit. I already serviced it and greased it a little bit several months ago. And the bike has gone more or less, I think, 1,000 kilometers. It's more. It, it was more, yeah, than 1,000 1, kilometers. And now, after 1,000 of perfect life, I think that I could hear you know, this creaking sound once again. So what I wanted to do is check how it looks inside. So I'm looking at it right now with you. You see this uh, black stuff, it's what happened with the grease with all this time. It's still greasy a little bit, but it's more already like greased with dirt. It does not feel like fresh grease now. So. It's pretty obvious that what we need to do is clean this 
black residue and then apply some new fresh grease. And this is exactly what I'm gonna do now. So I remove this plastic spacer. And we'll clean it one by one. pretty clean now it's not perfect but I think that I won't try to make it perfectly clean and frankly I'm not even sure that it is uh, possible maybe this black stuff got uh, in the plastic But I think it, it'll, it'll do like this, so we'll make another experiment. We'll leave it like this and we'll see how it goes, how it lasts. Now the second part, the body itself. It also has this black residue. I'll try to remove it with the rack. Actually, this should take a while to clean properly because I can see that the black residue is uh, inside and I think I'll go one by one and clean it again, maybe not 100% perfectly, but at least try to do it nicely. It took a while to tidy things up and uh, now it feels okay. What I actually had to do is use a wooden toothpick and go precisely and accurately inside each of the splines here to remove all the black residue. Actually there's still some left and probably it could be done better but I'm not going to lose too much time here now servicing the hub so I think we can give it a go. At least I'll try it like this and then report how many kilometers it goes this time before it needs to be serviced once again so let's try to pull everything back so we take the spacer and we put them together paying attention that the spacer legs sit in the right places and what we do next is greasing in the previous videos in the comments there were some questions about the type of grease Shimano insists that a special Shimano premium grease is used for this greasing I use Motorex uh, bike grease 2000 which is I think pretty much similar and should work fine so this time I'm applying more grease because Shimano now officially states that you should apply more grease in the first version they insisted that you should only apply a little bit now more so we go here and 
greasing. Greasing, greasing, greasing. Don't let the grease get inside here. You need to grease only the side part. Okay, once you have it greased, then once again check that the spacer is in its right place and after I think we can pull it back in. Let's see how it goes. So it, it, it goes fine. And actually don't apply too much grease because when you see how it works there actually if you apply too much the grease will go up anyway so it should be moderate I think okay we have the spacer we have the free hub body all well inside so what we need to do next is put the ceiling gasket and the ceiling gasket we have it here as I mentioned before it has some dust over it so that's will correct with a little bit of degreaser we put inside just something like general grease but for the um, ceiling spaces Shimano instructs us to use a special sealant grease and I have this grease from Shimano that's it so what they want us to do is put a little bit of grease over here in, on the inside area where the gasket touches the free up body and also you can put a little bit uh, on the free up body itself or over the contact area so first I go here around the hub So now you can probably see that we have this area covered with this ceiling grease, the area which will contact with the ceiling gasket. And we do the same with the gasket itself. We apply a bit of grease here. The purpose of this greasing is not allowing water and all other stuff inside that's it so what we do next we put the gasket like this it jumped in and now what what you ideally need further is this tool from Shimano it's actually uh, kind of a hub with the right diameter to help you gently press the gasket inside and that's it the first time I did the service of the app I didn't have this tool yeah. only now I do have it and back then I just gently pressed it back into with a piece of wood not sharp one but now let's see how this works. So we go like this and we gently press the gasket. Ah, and that's pretty much it. So the tool has a kind of indicator ring. If the ring is flush with the uh, edge of the hub, 
then it means that the gasket is inside so you don't need to do anything more so here is this indicator ring and our next step is the lock ring the lock ring let's see a little bit of dust around it either let's wipe it okay so we are we put now this lock ring inside so we need to use and make use of these pliers once again okay let's see how it goes okay it's now well inside probably you heard this click it means that everything work let's now wipe the excess dust and the final part the cap let's give it a little bit of clean as well and once again Shimano instructs us to put some sealing grease over here into this groove so that once we put uh, the cap back in it seals uh, the hub from water and other stuff going in so we are now ready to put the cap back in you hear the click that's it let's see now how many kilometers it does after this service <laughs> 